The next type of uh, crystal that you might have come across very commonly seen in a normal acidic urine is the calcium oxalate crystals. So as you can see they are colorless, refractile and they are envelope shaped. So normally the envelope is like this, yes or no? So they are basically envelope shaped but a squarish envelope, okay? They are like a squarish envelope. So you can appreciate over here, okay? Like this you can see the envelope. So these are the calcium oxalate crystals that we see. So these forms, these are the calcium oxalate dihydrate form. These are the dihydrate forms which are envelope shaped. Sometimes they are dumbbell shaped or peanut, peanut shaped like this. Sometimes they will have a dumbbell shape or a peanut shape like this. Okay, they are the monohydrate form. I will show you with the help of diagram. Okay, so these are very commonly encountered in normal urine. They are soluble in dilute hydrochloric acid. Now, ingestion of certain foods like tomatoes, spinach, cabbage, asparagus, rhubarb, they can cause their increase in numbers. Their increased number in fresh urine may also suggest the presence of oxalate stones. A large number are seen in ethylene glycol poisoning. Okay, Although they are a component of a normal urine, but if their amount is excessive and consistently present, then they might suggest an underlying disorder like for example, ethylene glycol poisoning or presence of an oxalate stone. So on the left hand side, as you can see this envelope shaped crystal, this is a calcium oxalate dihydrate crystal and this is a dumbbell shaped crystal which is basically the monohydrate form. Both can occur in normal use. So let us see the different kinds of cells. The first cell that we are going to read about is the RBC. So normally remember there is only 0 to 2 RBCs per high power field. Okay, So normally there are no or an occasional red blood cell in urine. In fresh urine sample, the red cells appear as small, smooth, yellowish, anucleate, biconcave disc. Biconcave because urine, if you uh, uh, RBCs, if you see from the side, you will see that RBC is biconcave in shape. This is like this. This is from the side. If you see from top, okay, you are going to see that th this biconcavity can be appreciated over here. So this is from the top as you see, okay. So you can appreciate all these, these are the RBCs, okay. All these, these are the RBCs that we are looking, okay. These are the RBCs, okay, under the microscope as we can appreciate yes. over here. So let me show you the presence of WBC. Now if you look at the WBC, so these are all the white blood cells that we can appreciate. So if you see, for the RBCs, we were having two rings like this and they were refractile. They were changing their appearance when you were making the coarse adjustment. But over here, if you see, okay, these are dull looking RB, uh, WBCs. So all of them, they are dull looking WBCs as we can appreciate. And see, some of them, you can also see the nucleus. See over here, the nucleus can be appreciated in some of them, okay. So they are very dull looking and you can see the outline of the nucleus also inside. So these are all the separate WBCs that we can see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it is more than 10 per high power field. Not only that, we can also see the clumps. We can see classical clumps of WBC. So again, this is this picture is highly suggestive of urinary tract infection. Okay. Myself, Dr. Gibran Amal presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with a very important lecture. Today we are going to complete the part 3 of urinary examination. So in the previous lecture, we had uh, seen the physical and the chemical examination of urine and in this particular series, we are going to complete the last leg that is the microscopic examination of urine. So let us begin today's topic of discussion without wasting any time. So microscopic examination of urine is also called as the liquid biopsy of the urinary tract. Now urine consists of various microscopic insoluble solid elements in suspension. And what are these elements? These elements includes the cells that is the RBCs, WBCs, the epithelial cells. Along with that we are having certain cast and microorganisms. To that we will also add something called as the presence of crystals, okay. There are also presence of crystals. Now, all these elements, they are suspended in urine and on standing, they will settle down and sediment at the bottom of the container. Therefore, they are known as urinary deposits or urinary sediments. Now, examination of urinary deposit is helpful in the diagnosis of urinary tract diseases. How they are helpful, we are going to see in the later half of the video, okay. So, different types of urinary sediments occur. The major aim of the, of the microscopic examination of urine, it is to identify the different types of cellular elements and the cast. Most of the crystals that we see, they are of very little uh, clinical significance. So in day-to-day -day reporting, uh, crystals do not play much role, but the presence of the cellular elements like the presence of 
RBC, WBC or the presence of organism or the presence of different kinds of caste, they play a much bigger role. Okay. Now, the specimen, remember, the cellular elements of the urine, they are best preserved in acid hypertonic urine. They deteriorate rapidly in alkaline hypotonic solution. A midstream, freshly voided, first morning specimen is preferred since it is most concentrated. The specimen should be examined within two hours of voiding because the cells and cast, they degenerate upon standing at room temperature. If, pre pre uh, sorry, if preservative is used, then one crystal of thymol or one drop of formalin, 40% is added to around 10 ml of urine. Okay. Now, let us see basically what are the different types of urinary sediments. So, we are having different kinds of urinary sediments like we have cells, cast, crystals, organisms and other elements. So, under the cells, we are having RBCs, WBCs, epithelial cells or oval fat bodies. Under the cast, we are having either cellular cast or we have non-cellular cast. So, what are the different types of cellular cast? These are the RBC cast, WBC cast renal epithelial cell cast then we are having non cellular cast like your hyaline cast granular cast waxy cast fatty cast under crystals we are having two types we are having normal crystals or we are having abnormal crystals so under normal crystals we have uric acid crystal calcium oxalate crystal amorphous urates calcium carbonate phosphates as well as ammonium urates under abnormal crystals we have cysteine cholesterol bilirubin crystals leucine tyrosine sulfonamide crystals then we have different types of organisms like bacteria, yeast, trichomonas vaginalis, microfilaria, cystosoma hematobium and then we have other elements like the sperm. So, we are going to discuss each and every one of them in details in the later half of the video. So, stay tuned till the end of the video. Next, we are going to see that how we prepare a urinary sediment. So, first you are taking a well mixed sample, okay, you take around 12 ml urine okay in a test tube and then you centrifuge it centrifuge it at the rate of 1500 rpm okay for 5 minutes okay after centrifugation you are going to get some amount of sediment and you are going to get supernatant okay so what you are going to do you have to discard you have to remove and throw away the supernatant leaving behind only 0.5 ml of urine okay and into this 0.5 ml of urine, this sediment has to be resuspended. So, you resuspend by just tapping at the bottom of the test tube. So, you get a resuspended urine sample. Now, from this resuspended sample, you take one drop, you place on a particular glass slide and then cover it with a cover slip. And then you are good to go for the microscopic examination. Always when you examine, first you will examine under low power view. That is followed by examination under high power view. Under low power view, you are going to see some larger elements like the different kinds of cast and crystals. They are better visualized under the low power. Then in the high power, you are going to look for the cells like the WBCs, RBCs, etc. Okay. Now, always remember while you are examining okay, the urine, you should always lower the condenser to better visualize the elements by reducing the illumination. When you lower down the condenser, you reduce the amount of light. So, there is a reduced illumination and you have a better contrast and higher chances of detecting different kinds of, of substances. So, the first very important uh, uh, thing that we are going to discuss is the presence of cells. So, let us see the different kinds of cells. The first cell that we are going to read about is the RBC. So, normally remember that there is only 0 to 2 RBCs per high power field. Okay, So, normally there are no or an occasional red blood cell in urine. In fresh urine sample, the red cells appear as small, smooth, yellowish, anucleate, biconcave disc. Biconcave because urine, if you uh, uh, RBCs, if you see from the side, you will see that RBC is biconcave in shape. This is like this. This is from the side. If you see from top, okay, you are going to see that th this biconcavity can be appreciated over here. So, this is from the top as you see, okay. So, you can appreciate all these, these are the RBCs, okay. All these, these are the RBCs that we are looking, okay. These are the RBCs, okay, under the microscope as we can appreciate over here. So, 
these are the rbc's normal rbc's they are about 7 micrometer in diameter they are called as isomorphic red cells okay so you have to recognize okay whether rbc's are present in a particular urine sample or not this is very important for you to report okay however remember red cells may appear swollen if the urine is dilute or hypotonic or the red cells may appear crenated if they are present in hypertonic urine. Crenated means the RBCs are somewhat like this. Okay, this is the crenated RBCs. Over here also, you can see very few RBCs which are crenated, but I will show you in the next diagram. Okay, so you can see certain crenated RBCs like over here. This is one crenated RBC. This is another crenated RBC. Okay, so normally if you look at the RBCs, okay, they appear as small a nucleate biconcave disc about 7 micrometer in diameter. Okay, as we can appreciate over here. And very importantly, these RBCs, if you see, they are refractile in nature. That means if you are going to change the fine and coarse adjustment then you can see that these rbcs they shine they are refractile okay so in which conditions mainly you will see the rbcs all the different kinds of causes of hematuria that we have already discussed before in all such conditions you will see the rbcs now in uh, glomerulonephritis the red cells they are typically described as being dysmorphic that is they are they vary markedly in their size and shape this results from the passage of such red cells through damaged glomeruli. Presence of more than 80% dysmorphic red cells is strongly suggestive of a glomerular pathology. The quantity of red cells can be reported as number of red cells per high power field. So whenever you report, for example, you have seen 5 to 6 RBCs, okay, 5 to 6 RBCs per high power field. This is how you should report it, okay. So this is how we report the presence of RBCs. Okay, now this is the RBCs in urine. Again, this is another diagram wherein I am showing you. So, over here we can see plenty of RBCs. So, when you are having more than 10, more than 20 RBCs per high power field, you can just label it as plenty of RBCs, okay, per high power field. You can just label it like this. So, over here you can see plenty of RBCs. So, RBCs under the microscope in the urine examination, okay, you will see something like this. You will see two rings. And if you adjust the fine and coarse adjustments, okay, then you will see that they become refractile, okay. There is some shininess, some refractileness is there, okay. So, these are the RBCs, okay. These all of them, they are RBCs over here, okay, that we can appreciate, okay. Okay. And then in this diagram, what I wanted to show you, the presence of dysmorphic RBCs. Those RBCs, they are having very different size and shape. For example, this, this is one dysmorphic RBC. This is the RBC which has passed through a damaged glomerulus, okay, which has passed through a damaged glomerulus because of which, okay, the shape has been altered. Again, we can see other dysmorphic RBCs also over here broken down, different size and shape. Now, all these other cells, these are also RBCs only, but these are crenated RBC. As I told you, these are only RBCs which have become crenated. Usually in hypertonic urine, they become crenated like this, okay. So, these are crenated RBCs, okay. These are RBCs only. Now, this is dysmorphic RBC. This is another diagram showing the dysmorphic RBCs. Just see the shape of these RBCs. Some of them are small, some of them are large in size, okay. Some are normal, some are abnormal, okay. So, there are various size and shapes of the RBCs. There are broken down RBCs, very small RBCs. As we can appreciate large RBCs, normal sized RBCs can be appreciated. So, these are dysmorphic RBCs and dysmorphic RBCs are reflective of a glomerular pathology. Okay. Now, this is again, this is acantholytic RBCs, which is another form of dysmorphic RBCs, wherein if you look at an RBC, okay, they will have certain blebbing, okay, like this. These are basically the acantholytic RBCs, which are nothing but the dysmorphic RBCs only. Okay, so I hope it is very clear to you people how does a RBC look like, okay, under the microscope, okay, okay. Next type of cell that we are going to see is the white blood cells, also called as the pus cells. So, white blood cells, the spherical, 10 to 15 micrometer in size, they are grander in appearance and they have a very dull looking appearance, okay, they have a very dull looking appearance. They are not refractile. Unlike RBCs, white blood cells are not refractile. Okay, so they have a, so they are granular in appearance in which the nuclei may be visible. Okay, so for example, you're looking at a polymorph. So you might be able to discern the, you know, uh, uh, the lobes of a neutrophil. Okay, so degenerated white cells are distorted 
smaller and have fewer granules. Clumps of numerous white cells are seen in infections. Presence of many white cells in urine, they are called as pyuria. Okay. So, remember normally around 0 to 2 white cells may be seen per high power field. So, there are 0 to 2, uh, you know, uh, 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 white blood cells or WBCs per high power field. This is normally. Now, pus cells greater than 10 per high power field or presence of clumps is suggestive of a urinary tract infection. So, whenever you have to look a particular uh, urine slide, always make sure that you report the presence of WBCs very properly because if there are plenty of RBCs, then the patient might be a candidate for therapy or for receiving antibiotics. Okay. So, very importantly, if you see clumps, if you see WBCs present in clumps, or per high power field, you are seeing more than 10 WBCs per 10 high power per high power field, then it is suggestive of urinary tract infection. So increased WBCs are seen in conditions of fever, pyelonephritis, lower urinary tract infection, tubulointestinal nephritis, and renal transplant rejection. In urinary tract infection, what are the other findings you will get along with raised WBC? So, first one thing is that you will either get clumps of pus cells or pus cells more than 10 per high power field will be there. Along with that, in the background, you might see the presence of rods. So, these are the presence of bacteria might be seen. You can see that chemically there is presence of albuminuria. So, they are positive for the proteins. There can be a positive nitrite test also. Okay. Now, Simultaneous presence of white cells and white cell cast indicates the presence of a renal infection. So, whenever along with, with uh, white blood cells, the white cell cast is also present, then it is indicative of an infection which is reaching the kidneys. So, over here, just the presence of pus cells indicates either pyelonephritis or lower urinary tract infection or tubular interstitial nephritis. But if you are finding WBCs cast, if you are seeing cast, then it is indicative of a renal origin. What is cast? We will discuss under the heading of the cast. But if you see white cells along with the white cell cast, it is indicative of a renal infection. Now, eosinophils, if you see, more than 1% of urinary leukocytes are characteristics of acute interstitial nephritis because of a drug reaction. So, let me show you the presence of WBC. Now, if you look at the WBC, so these are all the white blood cells that we can appreciate. So, if you see, for the RBCs, we were having two rings like this and they were refractile. They were changing their appearance when you were making the coarse adjustment. But over here, if you see, okay, these are dull looking RBC, uh, WBCs. So, all of them, they are dull looking WBCs as we can appreciate. And see, some of them, you can also see the nucleus. See over here, the nucleus can be appreciated in some of them, okay. So, they are very dull looking and you can see the outline of the nucleus also inside. So, these are all the separate WBCs that we can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, it is more than 10 per high power field. Not only that, we can also see the clumps. We can see classical clumps of WBC. So, again, this is this picture is highly suggestive of urinary tract infection. Okay. Okay. Then next we are uh, seeing looking at the renal tubular epithelial cells. So, renal tubular epithelial cells, what is this? Now, presence of renal tubular epithelial cell is a significant finding. Increased numbers are found in conditions which is causing tubular damage like acute tubular necrosis or pyelonephritis or viral infection of the kidney or allograft rejection, salicylate or heavy metal poisoning. All these conditions can cause the shedding of these renal tubular epithelial cells. So, this is actually a particular cast. Okay? And in this cast, we can see the presence of these renal tubular epithelial cells. Now, remember the renal tubular epithelial cell are the smallest of all the epithelial cells that you are going to come across. Okay. If you see these cells are smaller, the size is similar to that of a WBC. All these basically they are RBC. And this is a RBC cast actually. In this RBC cast, we are also looking at this presence of renal tubular epithelial cell. So, normally if you see the renal tubular epithelial cell, they are about the same size or slightly larger as compared to the WBC. They are polyhedral as we can appreciate, they are columnar and they are having a single eccentric nucleus as we can see. The nucleus is situated at one of these sides. So, single eccentric nucleus as we can appreciate over here. The, they can be polyhedral, columnar, oval or, and they have a granular cytoplasm. Renal tubular epithelial cells are difficult to distinguish from pus cells in unstained preparation. 
let me show you some other diagrams of uh, renal tubular epithelial cell so you can appreciate this is a renal tubular epithelial cell they are slightly larger as compared to a wbc okay they are slightly larger as compared to the wbc and they are the smallest of the renal epithelial cell if you see they have a granular cytoplasm they can be oval round polyhedral in shape they have a eccentric nucleus the nucleus is present at one of the ends okay so they are present at one of the ends and they are basically seen in conditions of tubular damage like acute tubular necrosis pyelonephritis viral infection of the kidney graft rejection salicylate or heavy metal poisoning okay now the other different kinds of uh, epithelial cells are the other, other epithelial cells they are the squamous epithelial cell they are the largest of the epithelial cell that you will come across if you see they, the, the appearance is very similar to what you see in the pap just that in pap you are having a stain over here they are unstained so these cells if you see they are actually lining the lower urethra and the vagina and they are best seen under the low power objective Presence of large numbers of a squamous cells in urine is indicative of contamination of urine with vaginal fluid. Now, these cells, if you see, they are the largest of the epithelial cells. So, they are large cells. They are rectangular in shape as we can appreciate over here. Okay, they, they are flat cells with abundant cytoplasm containing central small nucleus. As we can see, a central small nucleus is present over here. This is another uh, slide showing uh, plenty of squamous cell these are flat cells with small central nucleus okay and abundant cytoplasm these are all the squamous cells okay okay now now comes the transitional epithelial cells so as you will recall the transitional epithelial cells are the uh, are lining the uh, 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 the entire urinary tract it lines the uh, uh, renal pelvis the ureter bladder and the upper urethra these cells they are large they are diamond or pear shaped so you can see that they are actually little bit pear shaped okay they are pear shaped and they are larger as compared to the renal epithelial cells okay large number of of uh, and sheets of uh, these transitional cells are seen after catheterization and in transitional cell carcinoma now in the same slide i just wanted to show you a few things what are these can you tell me what are these these are actually nothing but the yeast these are the budding yeast we will show you under the heading of uh, your classically the under the heading of organisms we will show you the yeast but these are yeast okay so this is uh, and then there are other uh, you know uh, ep epithelial cells also now these are called as oval fat bodies now what are these oval fat bodies these are degenerated renal tubular epithelial cells only which become filled with highly refractile lipids so this is a renal tubular cell only which has become filled with fat okay which has become filled with fat or cholesterol droplets under polarized so again see this is a renal tubular epithelial cell you can see the fat droplet over here so under the polarized light okay such fat droplets they show a characteristic maltese cross pattern so you can see this is one cross they are forming like a cross this is a maltese cross pattern that we see they can be stained with a fat stain such as sudan 3 or oil red o and they are mainly seen in nephrotic syndrome in which there is lipid urea okay in which there is lipid urea so these are the oval fat bodies which represents nothing but the degenerated renal tubular epithelial cells which have become filled with cholesterol or fat droplet okay. now as i told you there can be other elements also what are these these are nothing but the sperm so you can see the sperm head and you can see the sperm tail okay so they might be seen sometimes in the urine of men okay now just to compare the different types of cells according to their size so if you see the renal tubular epithelial cells they are the smallest whereas the transitional cells they are little bit bigger and the squamous cells they are the largest in size okay okay so we have finished the discussion on the cells and now we are going to discuss in details about the cast so first we have to understand what are the renal cast okay so first of all always remember one thing whenever you see the cast cast is always indicative of a renal origin okay it is always indicative of a renal origin and very importantly see in the distal tubule so for example this is the glomerulus okay and from here this is the proximal convoluted tubule then the ascending limb of loop of henle and the descending limb of loop of henle and whatever it is going okay uh, so over here as they are coming over here in the dct in the distal convoluted tubule so i will just take you this this for example is a part of the distal convoluted tubule for example i am just showing you this is a part of the distal convoluted tubule so basically over here what is happening that renal cast okay they are basically formed in this dct only okay 
and they are taking the shape of the tubule where they are formed okay so if you look at any cars they are having this kind of shape they have parallel sides okay the sides are parallel and if you see very importantly over here okay their ends are rounded their ends are rounded with parallel sides okay so this is the basic shape of any kind of cars that we will see and this is nothing but because they have taken the shape of the uh, uh, respective tubule from which they are formed okay so the urinary cars they are cylindrical cigar shaped as i told you they are cylindrical cigar shaped microscopic structures that are mainly formed in the distal renal tubules and in the collecting ducts okay so they take the shape and diameter of the lumina of the renal tubule so whatever is the shape so for example this cast was formed inside a duct like this okay or inside a renal tubule like this okay so that is why they have this characteristic shape so always remember one thing that whatever cast that we are looking at okay so whatever cast we are looking at they are best seen under the low power objective under the 10x with the condenser lowered down to reduce the illumination now the cast they have parallel sides and they have rounded ends okay now cast are basically composed so any kind of cast that if you will see they have a basic composition okay so what is the basic composition so they have a basic composition of a protein that is secreted by the tubules and that is called as tam hosfall protein so any cast any cast has a basic protein you know uh, skeleton so any cast they have a basic protein skeleton which is made up of a protein that is called as the tam hosfall protein okay remember one thing so they are made up of a basic protein so any cast they have a particular structure made out of a tam hosfall protein and since the cast they are formed mainly in the renal tubules their presence is indicative of disease of renal origin or originating in the renal parenchyma although there are several types of cast all the urine cast they are basically hyaline various types of cast are formed when different types of elements will get deposited on this hyaline cast so for example this is a basic cast and in this cast you are only having a precipitate of tam hosfall protein then this cast is called as a hyaline cast now for example in this hyaline cast okay hyaline cast so any cast will contain tam hosfall protein that will be there that that is forming the skeleton so in this hyaline cast for example if rbc is there start to accumulate then we will call this cast as rbc cast similarly if wbc accumulates we will call it as a wbc cast if renal tubular epithelial cells start to accumulate we will call it as renal tubular epithelial cell cast okay similarly they can, if if this hyaline cast okay if this hyaline cast if you see they start to have granules we will call it as granular cast so similarly anything that is depositing on the hyaline cast okay uh, they have certain special name but the basic cast or the basic uh, skeleton on which the different types of cast are formed is hyaline cast only which is containing tam hosfall protein casts are only elements in the urinary sediment that are specific of ur of renal origin okay so again as we can see there are two types of cast one is your non cellular cast and another one is your cellular cast non cellular cast contains hyaline granular waxy and fatty cast cellular cast contains cells like rbcs wbcs and renal tubular epithelial cells hyaline and granular cast may appear in normal uh, or in disease states all other cast are found in kidney disease now if you look at the cellular cast okay the cellular cast if you see cellular cast they are called as cellular the cast should contain at least three cells in the matrix so for a cast to be called as a particular cellular cast for example if i want to name a a particular cast as a wbc cast then at least they should have three wbcs inside that cast cellular cast are named according to the type of cells which are entrapped in the particular matrix so how are the cast formed let, let us look at the pathogenesis of the formation of the cast so for example whenever there is stasis of urine or the urinary ph is low it is acidic or there is a high salt concentration of the filtrate this leads to denaturation and precipitation of the tam hosfall protein which first leads to the formation of hyaline cast and where are cast formed they are formed in the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting ducts okay and they will have this standard shape this is nothing but they are mimicking the shape of the tubule where they are formed now after the formation of the hyaline cast different other kinds of cast can arise 
Entrapment of cellular elements in the hyaline matrix tends to form cellular cast. So, for example, if RBC or WBC or renal tubular cells accumulate, then they will have respective kinds of cast. Degeneration of these cells within the cellular cast, okay, degeneration of cells within the cellular cast will occur to form coarse granular cast, okay. So, when these cells will degenerate, then they are going to give rise to granular cast. Prolonged stay of a cast in the tubules with further degeneration. So, the granular cast is going to further degenerate to form what is called as the waxy cast. And more pronounced further de uh, degeneration of the cast will lead to what is known as the formation of a broad cast. Okay. Always remember the broad and waxy cast, they are always indicative of a poor prognosis and they are seen in conditions of chronic renal failure. Okay. Long standing kidney failure. So, first non-cellular cast we are going to consider after that we will consider the cellular cast so this is number one the hyaline cast if you can appreciate over here this is the cast as we can appreciate over here so you can see the ends have been rounded and the sides they are parallel to each other so this is the side the sides are parallel to each other so basically they are formed of a protein that is called as tam hosfall protein and basically all the cast they are having this basic uh, you know skeleton framework so these are the most common type of cast in urine they are homogeneous colorless transparent and refractile as we can appreciate over here they are cylindrical with parallel sides and blunt rounded ends and low refractive index presence of occasional hyaline cast in urine is considered to be normal okay it is considered to be normal their presence is in increased number is abnormal and that is called as cylinduria what are they composed of? They are mainly composed of TAM hosfall protein. They can occur transiently after strenuous muscle exercise in healthy persons and also during fever. Increased numbers are found in conditions causing glomerular proteinuria. Okay, so the conditions, uh, so the uh, uh, number can be increased in disease states, but occasional hyaline cast they are considered to be normal. So this is how the hyaline cast looks like. Now, this is the next important, uh, you know, type of non-cellular cast that is the granular cast. Now, presence of degenerated cellular debris, whenever the cells degenerate, okay, they will contain granules as you can appreciate. So, again, over here, we can see this is one particular cast. The, the sides are parallel and the ends are rounded ends. You can see many dub, 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 small, small granules. So, basically, these granules are nothing but the degenerated cells. So, presence of degenerated cellular debris in the cast makes it granular in appearance as we can appreciate. This is again a granular cast as we can appreciate. Look at the basic shape of a cast. Okay, it is having parallel ends and rounded, <coughs> you know, sides. So, these are cylindrical structures with coarse or fine granules which represent degenerated renal tubular epithelial cells which are embedded in the hyaline cast which is composed of TAM hosfall protein. They are seen after strenuous muscle exercise and in fever. They are also seen in acute glomerular nephritis and pyelonephritis. Remember, these granules are very fine. So, these are called as fine granular cast. Okay. Now, sometimes these granules can become highly coarse in nature. These are called as muddy brown granular cast. So, these are the classical muddy brown granular cast. And it is very significant. Why? Because it is characteristic of acute tubular necrosis. So, muddy brown granular coarse cast and these, these granules, they are coarse in nature. These uh, such coarse granules, okay, they are suggestive of acute tubular necrosis. This is the high power view of the same. Okay, this is the muddy cast, muddy granular cast. These are having coarse granules. Next, we are going to, uh, to read about the waxy cast. So, these are most easily recognized uh, out of all the class. Okay, so they are formed when hyaline cast remains in renal tubules for a prolonged period of time, uh, you know, in situations of prolonged stress. Now, they are homogeneous, smooth and they are glassy appearance. They have cracked or serrated margins. So, the margins, if you see, they might be cracked. Okay, or the sides may have a crack or for example, these edges might be broken off. Okay, these edges might be broken off. Okay, so these the ends are straight and sharp and they are not rounded. So, if you see, look at other types of cast, if you see the borders, they are rounded over here. The ends are rounded. But if you look at a waxy cast, the ends are not rounded. Okay, the ends are sharp. 
they are light yellow in color okay and they are most commonly seen in end stage renal failure end stage renal disease you are going to see the vaxica so very important features that you are going to see that they have a very smooth and glassy appearance okay remember that the ends or the sides might have might be broken off they might have broken off ends okay and very importantly the ends they are not rounded rather the ends you know the corners are quite sharp over here they are not rounded okay they are not rounded this is another you know waxy cast as you can appreciate what i wanted to show you over here is this look at the rectangular nature and the sharp corners over here they are having a glassy appearance okay now very importantly if you look at the broad cast also okay broad uh, broad cast as well as your waxy cast both of them they are seen under the conditions of you know prolonged end stage renal failure okay next we are going to look about the we are going to see about the fatty cast so as you can appreciate so for example this is a hyaline cast okay and in this hyaline cast for example if you see deposition of fat globules then this cast only is called as fatty cast okay they are mainly seen in nephrotic syndrome so these are cylindrical structures filled with highly refractile fat globules containing cholesterol esters and triglyceride in tam phosphol protein matrix or in a hyaline cast there is deposition of such material this is called as a fatty cast okay this is another very important image as we can appreciate of a fatty cast so you can see a cast with multiple refractile fat globules okay they are seen mainly in nephrotic syndrome now this is another type of cast that is the broad cast okay very importantly broad cast they are formed in dilated distal tubules and they are seen in conditions of chronic renal failure and severe renal tubular obstruction so broad cast are very much you know they you know like the waxy cast only okay both waxy and broad cast are associated with a poor prognosis okay they are associated with a poor prognosis so let let us look at now for example these were all the non cellular cast now we are going to see the mainly the cellular cast okay cast which are containing cells so for example you can see that there are plenty of rbcs okay in this particular cast so this is the hyaline cast in which rbcs have gone and deposited see the rbc see the rbcs as i told you there will be two types of surface so all these cells if you can examine if you can see over here these are all rbcs so these are cylindrical structures with red cells which have deposited in hyaline cast containing tam hosphol protein matrix they may appear brown in color because of hemoglobin pigmentation they have greater diagnostic importance than any other cast if present they help to differentiate hematuria due to glomerular disease versus hematuria because of any other cause because if you see if you see the presence of a red cell cast then it is indicative of a renal origin only that means there is some problem at the level of the glomerulus and the cause of hematuria is some glomeruli uh, glomerular nephritis so rbc cast denotes glomerular pathology for example acute glomerular nephritis then we have the wbc cast again in the same shape of the hyaline cast we are having deposition of wbcs okay so these are cylindrical structures with white blood cells embedded in the hyaline cast composed of tam hosphol protein matrix the leukocytes usually enter into the tubules from the interstitium and therefore presence of leukocyte cast indicates tubulo interstitial disease like pyelonephritis okay so indication so whenever wbc cast is there then we are sure that infection is coming from the kidney so any cast the origin is from the kidney so wbcs along with the presence of wbc cast is indicative of infection of the kidneys okay okay now this is an, an, another wbc cast this is a high power view i wanted to show you so what is very important you can see the individual wbcs and you can see the multiple lobules also these are the neutrophils actually okay some lymphocytes might also be present over here so for example these are the mononuclear cells some of the uh, some of them they are the polymorphs okay understand so this is a high power view of the white cell cast next we are going to see the renal tubular epithelial cell cast now these are nothing but this is a hyaline cast in which the renal tubular epithelial cells have you know gone and deposited in the form of a cast so these are composed of renal tubular epithelial cells that have been sloughed off 
They are seen in acute tubular necrosis, viral renal disease, heavy metal poisoning and acute allograft rejection. Most of these are you know uh, uh, same as the causes of renal tubular epithelial cells in urine. Even an occasional renal tubular cast is a significant finding. Okay, they are a significant finding. Now we are going to summarize the different kinds of cast with the associated disorder. So highland cast, occasional highland cast, they are a normal finding. Whereas excessive highland cast, they are seen in certain di diseases and disorders. Fatty casts indicative of nephrotic syndrome where there is a lipid urea. Red cell casts, they are indicative of glomerular origin, glomerular nephritis and in malignant hypertension. White cell cast, acute pyelonephritis. Waxy cast, end stage renal disease, chronic renal fa failure. Not only that, both waxy cast as well as broad cast, okay, both of them are seen in this condition. Muddy brown granular cast, if you see, they are indicative of acute tubular necrosis and renal epithelial cell cast, again indicative of acute tubular necrosis. So, with this, we have completed the discussion on the different types of cast. Next, we are going to discuss the different types of crystals.